Hello, I'm Christine Blair, Dean of the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts at Duquesne University, and I'm delighted to contribute to this video celebrating the life, leadership, and legacy of Father Henry J. McAnulty, who served as the ninth president of Duquesne University from 1959 to 1980. As dean, I'm immensely proud our college was the first academic unit and that our origin story begins with Duquesne University's in 1878. I'm equally honored that our past, our present, and our future will always be aligned with the visionary leadership of Father Henry J. McAnulty. It's vital to me that every member of our liberal arts community, especially our newest members, understand the college's history and continue to work to live the mission that Father McAnulty inspired, one inherently connected to the role of a liberal arts education in the 21st century. The naming of the college soon after Father McAnulty's death in 1990 is a tribute to his ability to bring the community together in a time of great crisis when the university faced severe fiscal challenge and wasn't sure if it would survive. It's also a tribute to a transparent leadership style that enabled Father Mac to courageously reach out to students, many from the liberal arts, for help and to share in the workload and the credit of a masterful grassroots fundraising campaign. Undoubtedly, this is the hallmark of Duquesne's emphasis on serving God by serving students who in turn serve others. Our narrator, Dr. Rita Furco Joyce, was one of those students in the liberal arts who, along with her husband, Dr. Pat Joyce, were campus leaders who continued to serve as exemplars and role models at Duquesne, but especially in the McAnulty College. There's a beautiful photograph in College Hall that features Father McAnulty speaking to an assembly of students, with Pat Joyce featured prominently in the foreground. To me, it's inspirational because it reflects the way that Father McAnulty was able in that crisis moment to inspire the students of Duquesne, now our Golden Dukes, to apply their minds, hearts, and spirits to find another solution to that crisis moment, the third alternative. In our campus nomenclature, we're often referred to simply as the college or just as arts, but I find it important to reiterate that we are the McAnulty College and will always be the McAnulty College in the same way that Father McAnulty will always be regarded as the president of Duquesne University who, with the help of so many, saved this university. In my time at Duquesne, I've heard stories from our distinguished alumni, now business executives, lawyers, and educators, who recalled going door to door in Pittsburgh neighborhoods to raise funds to save Duquesne. They did so humbly, yet passionately, with a spirit of mercy, grace, and love. We are here because they were there. My role as Dean is to help our current community of students, faculty, and staff remember and honor Father McAnulty and our alumni's legacy of service to understand what a degree in liberal arts stands for. This includes our commitment to equipping our graduates with the essential skills and dispositions of ethical decision making and creative problem solving in a culture of civil discourse and servant leadership. Today we achieve this goal across nearly 30 majors and minors and close to 30 graduate programs and encourage our students to diversify their thinking so that they can reimagine our world and contribute to the public good. From his calling to the priesthood, to his military service as a chaplain, and to his transformational role as Duquesne University president, you'll learn more about Father McAnulty's journey through a comprehensive and engaging history written by Dr. Jim Fitzpatrick, a double duker with a 1974 undergraduate degree in liberal arts and a 1977 graduate degree in education, who also interviewed both Pat and Rita Joyce. Their shared history, aligned with the many archival images throughout, allow Father McAnulty's journey to guide our actions and live in our collective memory for years to come. Henry Joseph McAnulty was born on April 25, 1915, in the Shadyside section of the city of Pittsburgh. He was educated at Sacred Heart Grade School, Central Catholic High School, and Duquesne University earning a Bachelor of Arts degree, majoring in philosophy and English in 1936. 
Following his studies, Henry experienced a call to the priesthood. Thousands of Duquesne graduates and generations of students yet to come owe a debt of gratitude to Father Mack. Between 1945 and 1958, Father Mack was assigned to multiple domestic and international military bases, finally retiring in 1975 at the rank of Brigadier General, the first Catholic chaplain to be accorded such an honor. During his first year at Duquesne, Father McAnulty studied the campus from many perspectives. The duties of both president and provincial became overwhelming for Father Gallagher, and he decided to resign as university president and appointed Father Henry J. McAnulty as the ninth president of Duquesne University. Father Mack began reviewing, revising, and redesigning a master plan that would initiate tremendous changes that would be the renaissance of Duquesne University and be the legacy of Henry J. McAnulty. Father McAnulty hired a new director of university planning and a revamped master plan was adopted, now estimated at $24 million. When the campaign was announced, the dormitories were under construction. Renovations were underway to convert a garage into the School of Music. Enrollment grew to 7,114 students. Although the university had assumed enormous debt, all seemed well in 1965. However, dark clouds were gathering in Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. On August 23, 1966, the governor of Pennsylvania signed legislation making the University of Pittsburgh a state-related institution. Immediately, tuition at Pitt dropped by $1,000 per year, thus making Pitt a far more financially affordable school than Duquesne. Soon after that, the Allegheny County commissioners announced the establishment of the community college system this new system, along with Pitt's decreased tuition, posed a real threat to Duquesne's enrollment. Enrollment, tuition costs, budget challenges, all led to a financial cliff in 1970. Duquesne's debt service became a staggering $46 million. On Tuesday, April 21, 1970, Father McAnulty canceled classes for a State of the University address to the students, faculty, and staff. The result of that day's proceedings led to what was the beginning of the rebirth of Duquesne. Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> My name is James Fitzpatrick. I am a graduate of what is now known as the McAnulty College of Liberal Arts and also a graduate of the School of education. I am pleased to be here with two longtime friends and associates and colleagues and thank you for being part, an essential part, of this effort to perpetuate, explain, and pay tribute to the le legacy of Father Henry J. McAnulty, the ninth president of Duquesne University. How did the two of you, and if there were others, <laughs> first learn of the financial crisis the university was facing? How we first found out is that they laid out the situation with the problem and um, the budget committee of the university. And that's where I come in on. And yes. Um, I was the chair of the budget committee of student government and as, as that position I was put on the b budget committee of the university. Uh, that's when we first learned that there was a major problem and so that's when Father McAnulty said to the committee um, we have two alternatives. We can raise tuition in the middle of the year or we can close our doors. That's that simple. So we sat there and we talked about it and we came up with the fact that we needed to offer to do something. We would. 
raise money. We came up with an idea. Let's tell Father McAnulty that we will try to raise the money if he opens up to the students and the faculty and the university and just tells how we got into this situation. <laughs> so we, we decided to go over and present that that night. Um, I think it was 9 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 we're getting dark. Yeah, and it was, it's scary to go to Trinity Hall. <laughs> we, we, well, we, it was off limits back then. Sure, yeah. sure. So students were not allowed on Trinity Hall campus grounds, and we Trinity rang Hall. the doorbell, <laughs> and it was dark in the hallway, dark, and the light came on, and Father Loritis, who is vice president for university relations, mm -hmm. he came out, and he was looking through the door, and he opened the door and said, yes, we'd like to see the president, Father McAnally. And he said, do you have an appointment? And I said, we said, no. He said, uh, is he not expecting you? He said, no. And about 10 minutes, fifth, yeah. it was, yeah. It, it wasn't was, long. We hear this shuffling, <laughs> and it was Father McAnally, the president of the university, in his bed. Bedtime slippers. <laughs> we sat in the room and we said, we're concerned, Father, like we all are, but we have a proposal. Um, the student government would like to commit to you, to the university, to the community, to raise a million dollars. Well, he said, isn't that nice? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I don't know. I mean, yeah, I can't, I can't remember exactly but what he, he said he was, either. But he was yeah, at that time. not patronizing. He was warm as he always was. But he said, and, and how will you do that? And we said, I have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea, but we'll do a lot. We'll, we'll, we will we'll figure it out. And in order to do that, Father, you're going to have to cancel class. Uh, but the point was that... Um, unless we had students, faculty, and staff together to hear this message, that it, we didn't think it could work. He and agreed. he accepted right away. He agreed. He said, okay, yeah. let's give it a try. Our common yeah. cause was this university was worth saving, and that president was trustworthy, was believable, was someone that you could, you could believe he was telling the truth. And... We, we, we loved him. I thought about this a lot. Um, he was the epitome of servant leader. It's one thing to lead. It's another thing to serve. Um, he understood both. He could make a decision, but he always spoke the truth. And Vernon Gallagher saw leadership in, in Harry McEnall. Uh, I believe that with all my heart. And the other part of my answer is the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with this. He was the right man at the right, at time. The right time with the right set of, in the right set of circumstances. With a successful student-initiated third alternative campaign, helping Father Mack address the immediate financial crisis, there remained other issues to be addressed. On May 11, 1979, Father Henry J. McAnulty submitted notice to the Board of Directors of his intention to retire at the conclusion of the 1979-1980 academic year. The Board accepted his resignation and appointed him Chancellor of the University, the first president to receive this distinction. Father Mack retired as the ninth president of Duquesne University on July 1, 1980. When people were asked what was Father Mack's greatest accomplishment, everyone pointed to the building program. When Father Mack was asked, he said, students did not need to commend the university for doing anything, but when they did, that was the greatest accomplishment. His legacy continues to point to a shared responsibility to sustain the university and how Father Mack represented values that instilled in those students a sense of servant leadership 
that the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts honors to this day. Father McAnulty was asked to reflect on the financial crisis of the late 60s and early 70s. He was asked why he thought that the University of Pittsburgh, with less than half of the debt service he had, was unable to survive as an independent, but Duquesne did survive. He leaned back, folded his arms, looked up and said, it was the Holy Ghost. In 1958, of all the Holy Ghost fathers with university experience and terminal degrees, why did Father Gallagher pick Father McAnulty to lead Duquesne University? Perhaps if Father Gallagher were here to ask, he probably would say, it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs>